Travelling the length of a football pitch every second, they represent the fastest racing machines on water. It's an absolute kick in the pants. You go into a corner at 200 miles an hour, pulling about three Gs. Precariously balanced. It hurt. It, it was one of the hardest crashes I've been in. The boat did a complete 360 and landed right side up. The breathtaking world of unlimited hydroplane racing. Powered by 3,000 horsepower Chinook helicopter engines, unlimited hydroplanes are for many the ultimate racing machine. Skimming the water at 300 kilometers an hour plus, hovering at the point of takeoff. Champion, Nate Brown. You go into a corner at 200 miles an hour, and wham, your head goes up against the side of the cockpit at pulling about three Gs. Then you hit a wave from another boat. Boom! You feel 17 vertical Gs for a fraction of a second. But then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, wham, somebody cuts in front of you, and you got like 40 million pounds of water all over you. It's, it's fun. Nate Brown, enthusiasm personified. Following unparalleled success here in 2009, the Unlimited Hydroplane Tour returns to Qatar's Theater of Dreams, Doha. The Middle East capital that represents everything peace-loving, multicultural, and commercially pulsating. Added spice for local fans this year is the appearance of their very own U96, Dave Philwatt makes his Doha debut after successfully campaigning the American circuit. It's an unbelievable opportunity, really. You know, I've raced for big companies like Budweiser and, and gaming industries and whatnot, but um, to be able to do this for the people of Qatar is, is a huge honor and responsibility. Quite a year for Qatar, with Doha's Prince of Power, Sheikh Hassan bin Jabir Al Thani, pocketing American Supercats and World Superboat titles. And with Jay Price, the World F1 title, the country is the new headline act of world power boating. Whether Bill Watt can now add USA National High Points and Oryx World Cup to a rapidly filling trophy cabinet is his redoubtable objective. But as he found out to his cost a year ago here, sometimes the final hurdle is one too many. Last year's High Points champion Steve David and current UIM world champion J. Michael Kelly once more the big obstacles in his path. First though, all drivers must qualify. And after a nail-biting duel between Bill Watt and Steve David in Thursday's dwindling light, it's the Qatar man who comes out on top, reducing David's High Points lead by 20. But more importantly, giving him lame choice over David in Friday's important heats, should they be drawn together. Either way, there's still a long way to go before that Saturday lineup is settled. Eight heats in total, five boats in each heat, decided by drawing lots, with lane choice dependent on position in previous heats. Room for tactics. But as Bill Watt discovers in his first sorte, in this game, hero to villain is easily achievable. After a ragged start in lane one by his standards, he's swiftly playing catcher, but doesn't catch up. Dave, what happened? Uh, I don't know. He got a lap penalty. He just didn't leave enough room to go through the turn, and we got into the wike and destroyed part of the boat. That's all. I think there was plenty of room in there. I think it was more of a, you know, should have backed out and. Uh, 
you know, made it through there. He's definitely got the faster boat, but uh, you, you got to be there on the start, and that's where it comes down to. And if you're not there, uh, being on the inside, it's not a good place to be. Bill Watts, pit crew, left with just 60 minutes to repair the boat before the second heats, or he can kiss goodbye to winning anything. We got about an hour to get it fixed, so we're going to do our best. How much damage is there? We haven't had a chance to really take a look at it yet. You're going to be flat out? Absolutely. And Bill Walk isn't the only one in the wrong place at the wrong time in that heat. Ryan Perkins is in the wars too. So Christmas makes an early appearance for David and his oh boy Alberto team. He wins his heat comfortably, opening up a high points lead in excess of 500 over his arch rival. Second heats in a moment. First, though, let's pick up on the point that Jeff Bernard just made. Unlike other motorsports, unlimited hydroplanes involves hitting the start line at zero seconds. Two, one, mark. It's a good start. It is a good... Get there early and you're docked to luck. Get there late and you're chasing roosters, which is exactly what happened to Bill Walk. Tight two-mile oval circuit, three laps. That's two and a half minutes in which to rectify a poor start. And that's not the whole story. This course is is got a lot of uh, unpredictable uh, wave action. You know, like I said, with the uh, the shipping traffic out there, and then we're in this little cove with a little bit of wind. The the uh, swells are so large that you can't see them. You're going 185 miles an hour, and all of a sudden the the water falls out from underneath you, and you're airborne, or you know, and you're trying to figure out how to navigate through this without getting it upside down. Repaired in the nick of time, 96's second effort is altogether better than the first. Despite a supreme J. Michael Kelly effort, Bill Watt gets the Qatar show on the road, with Greg Hopp filling third spot. In the corresponding heat, Steve David chalks up his second maximum with the impressive Jeff Bernard coming in behind him. J.W. Myers is a distant third, U25 superior racing breakdown, and this red dot U17 doesn't start. As we've seen, traveling in excess of 250 kilometers an hour around corners in this game is a risky business. It requires skill and an essential piece of equipment. What this fin does is allow you to turn left without drifting out, so we can run right on the buoys if we choose to, or turn the boat wherever we want to, because it allows the boat not to hunt at all like you would if you were in a car on wet pavement. This keeps you going the direction you want to go. The adjustments are for height, back and forward, and canting in or out, and that depends on the race course. If it's a race course with real tight turns, we'll want to cant this in to suck that left sponson down so the left side doesn't raise up around a turn. If it's a wide turn, like here we have in Doha, we'll pull it out a bit to let it have more speed going through the turn. We'll raise it up on a course where we have real big turns so we don't have too much drag going through the turn. Essentially, when you're, you're turning to what we call crabbing, this whole fin is acting like a giant barn door to hold you through that turn. And when we go into a turn, you'll actually see two rooster tails behind the boat. One is from the propeller, and the other is from the turn fin water. Sounds good so far, but what happens if the fin loosens or breaks? It's not a good day. <laughs> Generally, if you lose this in a turn, you're just a, a sheet of plywood flying into the wind. So you're going to go wherever God wants to take you. Jay W. Myers. We were going through the turn there in uh, Detroit, the tightest turn we have in the entire series, and uh, the skid fin tore right off the side of the boat. And in that case, the boat just goes pretty much just straight, and we're in the middle of the turn, and we went right into a concrete and steel wall. It pretty much wiped out the entire left side of the boat and the front of the cockpit, and the side forces went so uh, drastic, it pushed the right sponson off the boat from the uh, side loads. That is so scary. Back to Doha then, halfway through the final event of 2010. Steve David in the driving seat in the National High Points title chase. Two heats and a final left. It's now his to throw away. So as the sun goes down on day two in Doha, the population is also revving up. Plenty to take in and get close up to. And for one little group especially, the orphans of Qatar's Dreamer Foundation, a few special moments never to be forgotten. Back in a couple of minutes.
Welcome back to Doha, Qatar. Live now with the unlimited hydroplanes for the final action of 2010. Heat 4B on the crane, and that starts in around five minutes, so just time for us to quickly catch up with the day's earlier heats. 3A providing an opportunity for the crowds to see Bill Watt versus David for the first time this weekend. Bill Watt heading into the clash, trailing by 566 points in the race to the National High Points title. Brian Perkins, Kit Brown and Mike Webster fill the outside lane positions. It's a must win for the spirit of Qatar, but those expecting a bloodbath would be disappointed. With only 100 points, the difference between finishing first and second, David forsakes his right to race in lane one to play percentages in lane two. Little bit of racing, but Bill Watt wins. David is second, job done for both. Deficit now down to 466 points. J. Michael Kelly is the pole sitter for Heat 3B. Jeff Bernard, Greg Hopp, J.W. Myers and Ken Muscatel on the flanks. Hopp is sensational, blasting around the scenic route and into the lead as the favourites stutter. Myers slots into fourth. It's a fearsome exchange, Hopp bending off Kelly's challenge throughout the next laps until eventually the man in number seven gets a little too intimate with Hopp's rooster tail and dips out. Hop holds on to record a hard-earned victory, but it's not the end of the story. He's then disqualified for washing down or impeding Kelly on turn three, lap two. We kind of got bit yesterday by a call, and now it looks like we're getting bit again, so. That is boat racing, as they say. I guess so. In heat 4A, it's a must win for Bill Watt to keep his national points title hopes flickering. But again, he's late at the start line. Three, two, one, mark. Bad goes to worse when he then gets stuck behind High Flyer Kelly and, in attempting to pass, gets the dreaded hose down, and that effectively is it. Second isn't now good enough if David finishes second or better in his heat coming up. But this is unlimited hydroplane racing, and you never know. And so here we go then, live with that Heat 4B. Great opportunity for Steve David to make it three high points national championships in three years. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Oh, bang on zero there for the front three, front three but that was very, very close. 300 kilometers an hour now into turn one and Muscatel is gonna be squeezed here. And doused. That was a lot of water. His hope must be that none of that salt water went into the turbine. Gas turbines and salt water do not make a happy marriage. But look at Hop. Hop number 100 is giving the national high points champion designate a hard time here on that one. Greg Hop, disappointment so far in his two. Uh, the two sorties this weekend. Oh, throws that boat and almost got a right angle into the turn. Pushes Steve David just a little bit wide, and Steve David with his hands full here now. Second, of course, OK to lift the National High Points title, but with the accomplished Jeff Bernard in his rooster, he can take nothing for granted. Third place would mean he'd have to fight again. Into turn two again. Oh, but it's going wrong for Hawk. It's all going wrong for Hop. An absolute tragedy. Hop just broke. Hop, Hop just broke. Hop's going down, so you're we're in first. It's cruise, cruise, cruise control. And the unfortunate Greg Hop will be left to rue what has been very, very unfortunate luck for him this weekend. He has put in some good laps, but it's all going to come to nothing. Steve David, meanwhile, now just has to keep out of trouble to record that third successive National High Points Championship. Not quite sure if he knows what cruise control means. You heard earlier his crew chief saying, cruise control, cruise control. Jeff Bernard is still there. Jeff Bernard is closing up on Steve David. One more lap and we'll have a high point deal unless something really crazy happens. And this is one sport where crazy things do happen. The nerves will be jangling a little bit, I think, in Steve David's cockpit. He knows from last year on this very straight. Uh, 
170 miles an hour, over 300 kilometers an hour. An extra puff of breeze under his boat just in this spot here. And he did a complete 360 degree loop in the air. Landed the boat the correct way up, but he would never ever do that again, I'm sure, in his lifetime. But he's round the corner, soon into the home straight. Cruiser on down, bud. Cruiser on down. Check your flag. Check your flag. Flag you won. Check your flag. You won. Good job, bud. Good job. Steve David and his old boy Alberto team are the new 2010 National High Points champions. A great team, one of the most accomplished teams of all time in unlimited hydroplane racing. The anticipated challenge from Qatar man Dave Vilwok unexpectedly fizzling out on day one. That said, take nothing away. High Points champion, how does it feel? Well, just Larry Hansen, Mike Hansen, and this crew, and the city of Mastin I mean, they just created history. This is, I think, only five teams in the 100 something year history of the sport that have ever run, you know, three national championships in a row, and it's a testament to them, but also a testament to the teams who run against. So you've got the uh, Oryx Cup to come up. Uh, how, how good is the uh, possibility of a double sign? I, I think it's very good. We're going to be in lane one. I think uh, J. Michael Kelly will be in lane two, and I think the guitar boat will be in, in three or four, so we have a wonderful shot of, of winning everything here, and uh, we're not curing cancer, but for our sport, we're going to do the very best we can. Steve David up for the double. J. Michael Kelly to defend his Oryx World title in a couple of minutes. Just time to catch up with the man who runs the show stateside. The opportunity that we've had here, thanks to uh, Sheikh Hassan and the QMSF, has allowed us to do this now for the second year. And as I think everyone has seen, the crowds are bigger, uh, there's a lot more excitement in the air, and the racing is as good as ever. Do you think this event will open doors for you internationally? I would say that it already has opened doors for us internationally. Uh, we have a delegation here this year from China. Uh, there's also a delegation here from the Ukraine. And I'm also told that perhaps uh, another country or two from the Middle East. So uh, this has definitely opened new doors and a new frontier for our sport. So many positives there from Sam Cole. A fabulous future for the sport worldwide, and we all look forward to that. Meanwhile, time now to focus on the final and biggest showdown of the year. The world's best head-to-head. -head. All eyes on the potential clash between David and Kelly. Bill Wock, who suspect, must be out of it in lane four. Few win from out there. Five laps, David O'Boyoberto, lane one from Kelly, number seven. Graham trucking. Bernard, number five, FormulaPost.com. Bill Wok, the spirit of Qatar. Myers, 37, Miss Peters and May. Perkins, 21, go fast. And Webster, 22, great Scott. Into the countdown on board with J.W. Myers. Well, he's uh, wide looking for a flyer here, I think, as the clock counts down to zero. Oh, and he is chancing his arm out there from lane five. On board with Jeff Bernard. 200 metres to count down zero. Four, three, two, one. All right, go, 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 go. And Myers clearly over the line. One lap penalty for him. Riding with J. Michael Kelly. Good start, good start. Turn one, 300 kilometres an hour in. Steve David at Kelly at his side, hurls the boat in and out of the mark. Myers flashes through, you saw there on the outside, and he's buried Vilwok in his spray, and the task now facing the Qatar man has taken a huge twist in the wrong direction. On board with David, eyes focused on turn two, coming up, here it is. Fabulous first two kilometers for the Madison man. Not home and dry though by any means. Kelly, fire in his belly, is on the case. Turn two, 3G forces racking the body. Skid fin deep, 750 pounds of pressure on the arms. And Bill Walk has started a charge. Riding with Brian Perkins in fifth, into the straight. David on the right, picking up the pace. Kelly and Bernard left, 325 kilometers an hour. And a hard stopper there for David. Fighting now to get the boat back under control. Backing off is not an option. Kelly's on the way. Kelly flashes through. Can he hold the exit? Yes, he can. Kelly is in front, and that was brilliant. And it might even get worse for the high.
five points champion. Bill Walk is now clear of Bernard, hunting him down. Bill Walk's last sector time, 20.23 seconds, average 308 kilometers an hour. Kelly, turn two for the second time. Out at 250 kilometers an hour. David desperately trying to claw back the deficit. Kelly has to leave him space. And here comes Bill Walk, rocking and rolling. U96, carrying 255, 256 kilometers an hour out of that turn. No resistance from David, and the Qatar man is settling second. Well, 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 head down, foot down, heart pounding, man and machine hovering on the edge. Bill Watt suddenly possessed with trying to win this one. Unbelievable. Steve David reduced to a spectator. Maybe problems with his steering, we heard. Past the halfway, two laps remain after this one. And I wouldn't mind betting they're going to be a full-blooded pair. Bill Watt. Pounding it again on the outside, exit, turn two, lap three. Kelly, a little hop, and Vilwok, huge impetus from that turn. Attack, 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 down the straight, and here he goes, and that's 332 kilometers an hour. But Kelly wised up and slipped that net. Bill Walk again, having to chase wide, lining up, a hard, fast cut at the exit, hop, skip, and jump. The adrenaline is taking over. It's hard overhead now. We hope not head over heels. But that's another slick exit for Kelly, but that may not be enough on this turn. Bill Walk again, taking huge momentum out of it. He's on the charge, and there he goes. There he goes, Dave Vilwalk, the magnificent man in his flying machine, has put Qatar 96 at the pointed end on lap four after starting from grid four. Well, what can you say about the man? Magnificent will have to do for the moment. J. Michael Kelly won't be throwing in the towel just yet, hidden in the rooster. We'll take something a bit special now, maybe a, a miracle for Kelly. Well, he got it here last year from a similar last gap scenario when Bill Walk's engine developed a cough. Well, he's jumping up and down, but he ain't spluttered yet. They can't bear to watch in the pit lane. Four and a half laps, flying at the point of takeoff, and he's still pointing in the right direction. No one can quite believe it. Yep, it's not going to be a threat. They're not going to come after us. We're fine right where we're at. Just finish one more lap. By comparison, Steve David now taking a Saturday afternoon stroll. Bernard's threat evaporating, podium third now. Almost a certainty for the high points champion. And he can only watch as Qatar's new superman, Dave will walk around the final bend. Kelly's last lap effort falling away. Mission impossible, well, and almost anyway, is completed in stunning style by U96. J. Michael Kelly playing his part in all that drama. Born to lead the next generation of all greats, they say. Quite where Steve Davis' mind is, I don't know. National High Points champion for the third time in a row is a history equaling achievement. That said, the Oryx World title would have made tasty icing on his cake. You can judge whether Bill Watts, Picker are happy. It went their way. And no prizes for guessing how that man feels. A truly amazing way to complete a weekend of racing that began so badly for him. Deserved applause from the big crowds here. So the leading players divide up the two major spoils for 2010. J. Michael Kelly breathing down their necks. Steve Montgomery joins him in the pits. Great drive, young man. He had a little too much race boat, didn't he? Yeah, kind of a heartbreaker, but, you know, we worked our tails off and, uh, you know, I'm proud of Dave, though, you know, with the few things that's happened to him this week, and he uh, came through at the end. Uh, you know, I thought I had it there, and then uh, here came Dave, and, uh, you know, number 62 for Dave, and that's uh, quite a comp. Congratulations on tying the great Bill Muncy, and you really uh, had to work for this one, didn't you? Boy, they were out front there a long time. I think, did J-Dub jump? Yeah, he did. He jumped, and I had my fairing and this rooster tail through the whole first turn. There just wasn't any room there at all, and then... That got me behind, and I just had to keep pedaling, and I saw, I can, I, maybe I can do it, maybe yeah. I can do it. I just didn't give up. Dave, I know it means a lot to you to tie Bill Muncy with 62 wins, but I know that you really wanted to win this race for your fans here in Qatar. They love you. They love this race boat. They are very happy right now. I've raced for some teams before and corporate entities, but to race for an entire country, an entire people, 
to have that honor and responsibility at the same time was was what drove drove me to to a <laughs> I'm a little choked up. <laughs> it drove me to a, a new place. Nick Hassan, Ben Jabor Alfani, this is the Oryx Cup, our 2010 Oryx Cup champion. And so we must leave Doha, an emotional day Phil walk, a reminder of the traditions and the values that continue to drive Qatar to greatness. At the end of a simply breathtaking weekend, it's goodbye from me, Peter Butler. See you next time.